Hello and welcome to my sword beginner guide. I'll be covering weapon tactics, overall boon choice, preferred hammers, and touching on aspects near the end. I'm gonna skip the YouTube fluff, let's get started. The sword is the first weapon you use in Hades, and rightly so. It seems to be the simplest weapon at first glance. It has an easy 3 hit combo and an AoE special, but nothing else going on. As you may have found out, the sword's basic attack sequence is really quite weak. It has short range, a lot of startup, and low damage for the amount of time it takes. In in general, the vast majority of players prefer to use dash strikes. If you dash and then press attack within maybe half a second or so, the window is a lot bigger than you think, trust me, then a dash strike will come out. Sword really likes dash strikes. Dash strikes deal pretty good damage, you can chain them together, and they allow you to be very mobile. However, it's very possible that you already knew that Sword really likes dash strikes, but inputting them consistently for you is really difficult. That's okay. If you struggle to do dash strikes, you have a few different options. The first thing I would always recommend is to go into your options and adjust your bindings so that they are comfortable for you. Personally, I prefer to have a dash on my shoulder button because that makes dash strikes much more consistent for me. If changing your controls doesn't make dash strikes easier for you, I still would recommend you try and figure out what it is that is making it difficult because pretty much all of Hades weapons really like dash strikes and it's a very important part of the game. With that said, if it's just not working for you with regards to sword, I would recommend and trying Poseidon Aspect. I'll be covering Poseidon at a different time, but keep in mind that it's an option if you struggle to dash strike. To deal damage with sword, you have to be close to an enemy, which means they can hit you back. Armored enemies can really give you a rough time because they do not get stun locked by regular attacks. This means that you need to really pay attention when you're fighting them and try and dash through their attacks. Make sure to not dash strike when you are avoiding an attack because that actually removes your intangibility. Now let's move on to boon choices. You can treat Zag and Nemesis swords pretty much identical with regards to boon choice. This is because they play pretty much the same, except that Nemesis is better. With these swords, attack is going to be your main damage source, and thus you want something good on there. My personal choice would be either Artemis or Aphrodite. For your special, I would recommend getting the other. So if you got Aphrodite on your attack, take Artemis on your special. This is because of the Artemis-Aphrodite duo boon called Heartrend. Heartrend is a very powerful duo boon, and what I personally build towards when I play Zag or Nemesis sword. Next, Next, we have Cast. If you are using Poseidon Sword, this is very important because Cast is your main damage source if you are using Poseidon. If you are using any other sword aspect, however, the only thing that really matters is that it launches, and preferably isn't Aphrodite. This is because of the boiling blood bonus in the mirror. I don't like using Aphrodite's Cast with Sword because Cast also serves as a supplemental ranged damage. If, for example, there's a witch floating over lava and Asphodel and you can't really get over there, you can use Cast to take them out, and if you have Aphrodite cast, you can't do that anymore. The differences between the rest of the lodging casts don't really matter, so frankly just use whatever pops up. Additionally, you really don't need a cast boon since you are only using it to lodge, so if something better is in there, don't hesitate to take it instead. Now we have dash. Dash boons in Hades are pretty divisive. In my opinion, there are really only two consistently good dashes. Those are Athena dash and Poseidon dash. Poseidon dash does a ton of damage and also helps a little bit with safety because it has knockback and pushes enemies away, but it is also a lot more difficult to use, especially as a newer player. When you are just starting out, especially if sword is difficult for you, I would highly recommend using Athena Dash. This boon will protect you a lot, and while I would recommend not relying on it too much as a crutch because you need to learn how to dodge things eventually, it can really help you out when you are using sword. Finally, we have Call. Call, much like Dash, is up to player experience. If you prefer to have a call that gives you invulnerability, take one of those. If you prefer to have a damage dealing call, Zeus or Dying Dionysus are your best bet. If you run into chaos, getting more dash strike damage is best, though attack is also good since it affects dash strikes as well. The best boon from Hermes is far and away Greatest Reflex, which drastically increases your DPS by giving you more dash strikes per rotation. The Hyper Sprint and Rush Delivery combo is amazing as well, but much harder to get, so I recommend rolling for Greatest Reflex. Now, it's hammer time. Let's start by looking at the hammers that only affect the regular attack sequence. First off, we have Cruel Thrust. Simply put, this hammer's bad, don't use it. Curse Slash is generally pretty good for beginners when you get hit by a lot of things. Once you start to get a better hang of the game and you don't take damage as often, you start feeling the minus 60% life total far more and benefit less from the healing. In short, as you get better, Curse Slash becomes worse. I personally only take it when I also have Flurry Slash. Speaking of which, Flurry Slash is pretty great. This makes the normal attack sequence actually usable and pretty strong in the right circumstances. Shadow Slash is alright, it is better 
best use on the hidden aspects, but I still think that there are much better options out there. Finally, we have World Splitter. If you can get the hang of it and use it appropriately, it can be pretty strong, but it does take some getting used to, and frankly, there are better options. There are a lot of attack hammers that also affect Dash Strike, and these are the ones that we are more interested in. Reaching Slash, while being a little boring, still gets the job done and really makes your run through Elysium a lot easier. Double Edge is just easily the best sword hammer in the game. There's not really a competition at all. If you see Double Edge, take Double Edge. Hoarding Slash is just really weird. The way that it adds damage isn't as obvious as it would be. It uses kind of its own damage calculation, but if for whatever reason you have a crap ton of money and don't want to use it, go for it. But generally, other things are better. Piercing Wave is an interesting one. It does activate when you use Dash Strikes, but Dash Strikes move faster than the Wave, which means your Dash Strike will hit things before the Wave, and sometimes it feels like they're not doing anything, but they are. It's an alright upgrade. Finally, we have Special Hammers. Since attack is generally the main source of damage for Zag and Nemesis Swords, typically these aren't that great, but with the number of bad attack Sword Hammers there are, sometimes these are still your best bet. Dash Nova is not one of these, however. It's not very good. If you've played enough to develop a little bit of a muscle memory with the sword, Dash Nova will just go ahead and screw that all up. If you are new to the weapon though, this hammer will feel a lot better. Double Nova effectively doubles your special's damage while removing the knockback. I generally don't care too much about the knockback, so this works out, but if you can get something that affects dash strikes, that's typically better. Supernova is okay. The main thing it does in my opinion is help reduce the sword's lack of range by making the special much bigger. The damage increase is small enough to kind of be negligible, but it's still nice. And the Arthur exclusive hammer, Greater Consecration, slowing things down more is not bad. I don't think that it's the best hammer. It's it's pretty negligible in my opinion. Finally, let's briefly go over the sword aspects. Zag sword, as previously mentioned, is pretty weak. There's not much reason to use it, and it basically is just a worse version of Nemesis. If you insist on using it, however, compared to Nemesis, it does have a handful of advantages. Flurry Slash and Cursed Slash are both a little bit stronger on Zag sword than Nemesis, but it's not really that big of a deal. Similarly, if you can manage to get rush delivery from Hermes, you'll be dealing a little bit more damage than you would on Nemesis, but that doesn't mean that you should use Nemesis. Speaking of which, Nemesis Sword is really good. 30% critical chance is a huge damage increase. The way that the math works out, this effectively works out to 60% more true multiplicative damage. Of course, it comes with the caveat that you need to be specialing every 3 seconds. But with the sword's optimal damage rotation, which is special dash strike dash strike and repeating, you'll want to be doing that anyway. In short, Nemesis Sword is the swordiest sword and the best at its job. Poseidon Sword is a really interesting aspect, and I don't see people using it or recommending it very often, even though it's pretty good. 50% extra cast damage is a little smaller than you might expect, but it's still a pretty decent increase, especially considering casts get less damage percent increases than, say, attack or special. The main point of the aspect, though, is of course special dislodging casts. This is really powerful, because it means that you can exclusively use casts to damage bosses or mini bosses, which is a lot stronger than it sounds. If you're the sort of player that likes to stay at range, I would stick with Poseidon Sword. Hidden Sword is the crowd pleaser. It is slow, but has really, really big, really chunky hits. Additionally, your special has an aura which reduces your taken damage while also slowing enemies, projectiles, and disabling traps. It's definitely a fun aspect, and if you haven't tried it yet and don't have it unlocked, there's a guide to unlocking hidden aspects in the description. That covers everything you need to know to use the sword well. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I have more Hades guides on the way. I know I've been a little inconsistent, but I'm starting to get into the swing of things with this YouTube stuff. So if you are interested, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day.